Gary Mitchell, um, GP working in uh, Dunedin in an urgent care facility. Thanks for inviting me along. Looking forward to talking about ultrasound, musculoskeletal ultrasound mostly. So this is the kind of terrain that we have down south where we get a lot of our customers and our opportunities for musculoskeletal ultrasound from. This presentation will be a bit like going up a mountain and we're going to start slow and then we're going to accelerate towards the end. So we'll get straight into it. This is, um, I mean, obviously a fracture and when you put the probe on, your patient will often say, oh, there it is, straight away, there's the fracture. And you might wonder why we would be even bothering to ultrasound fracture. Don't we get just the same amount of information or even more information from an x-ray? And that's uh, partly what I want to cover today. They're very easy to see, fractures very easy to measure. You can look at, you can see angles. And you'll notice this one, if you've been doing scans for a while, you notice this is a, a slightly rounded at the edges there. And this is a month old. So this is an ultrasound that I did just to check that, you know, how the position was. You can also see a bit of healing as well, uh, early callus and so forth. So as we go through these pictures, you'll quickly get the idea that fractures are so simple to see on an ultrasound, especially of the long bone. Here's the lower tibia. You see a little fragment uh, slightly displaced there. And you can see different layers, of course. You've got the skin, the subcutaneous tissue. You've got a, a tendon running through there and disruption to the cortex. This is all reflection down here. You can't see into bones with an ultrasound. You can only see the cortex. So I'm looking at all fractures, all the fractures I see I'm looking at with my scan. Start with buckles and I've got to the point of wondering whether we should be x-raying buckles at all. And clearly you can see a buckle fracture here. We'll show you a few different examples. See the little buckle up there and see a growth plate there and then uh, the distal radius going down into the joint there. Kids love these. You know, you put a lot of gel on so you don't even need to touch the skin sometimes. You can just sort of sit the probe on the gel. Very comfortable. And for the child, I often give the child the probe and get them to put it on where it's sore. And straight away, you might get an image like this on your scan. And you can see on the x-ray, you can see this typical buckle fracture that you've been, uh, that you see several times a week in your clinic. And how easy it is to see on a, on a scan there. But, you know, won't we miss buckle fractures? Won't they be too hard to see the subtle ones? Well, here's a subtle one. Um, you can't even really see it on the AP, but on the lateral, you see a slight uh, deviation of the cortex there. And on the ultrasound, you just see the same thing. You see this should be a smooth line up here, but there's a slight angle there. And it's not difficult to get that picture with just a longitudinal dorsal view. This one's slightly more obvious. It's a bit harder to, a bit hard to see there on the, um, sorry, yeah, a bit hard to see there on the AP, but you can see a slight buckle there. A bit more obvious on the lateral there, and very easy on the ultrasound. And actually, after the first 50 or more of these, I've started just scanning these now, and I feel like I often get the child out into a splint and probably actually home on the couch by the time they would have uh, got to x-ray here. You know, so there's a clear time saving thing here. Time, it's all about time, isn't it? People say, well, if you're doing a scan, aren't you just taking more time? Isn't it slowing you down? Actually, no. Uh, if your scan is part of your regular examination, very quickly you'll find situations where you don't have to worry about writing out an x-ray form. You can see this um, you can see this buckle here on the, for example, a buckle here on the scan, sorted out, child out the door. You don't have to fill out a form. You don't have to find the child when they're back from x-ray and job done. Sorry, going on about buckles, but um, this is a child that came in and the x-ray machine was out of use for whatever reason, broken down or st on strike. And so it was put into a cast and then on x-rayed later on when the x-ray machine came back on couldn't really see very well so later on in fracture clinic we took off the cast just scanned it oh yep there is a buckle there 
um, and just carried on with a wrist splint and the usual buckle treatment. So many buckles. This one, um, hang on, there's a buckle there on this x ray. Have a look here. Oh, there it is. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? So, what about other fractures? Well, there's a Salter Harris 2 there, fairly minor. And actually, I think it's easier to see on the scan than it is on the x ray. But uh, you probably guessed I was going to say that. So you might be interested in distal radiuses. Are they displaced? Are they angulated? Well, it's not difficult to put a protractor on your ultrasound screen and just see what the angle is. And you can see from this x-ray it's not displaced. Sorry, from this ultrasound. There's way more than bones to musculoskeletal ultrasound, of course, and you're going to be asked by your colleagues who are working with you, once they find out you're doing musculoskeletal ultrasound, you'll be inundated with requests and somebody will come along, like with this uh, great big uh, de Quer veins, you know, sort of tenosynovitis, and you'll be, uh, before you know it, you'll be trying to pop a needle in to there. And these are common consultations, not just for urgent care, but for GPs too. And I wouldn't be comfortable in a GP surgery without an ultrasound for musculoskeletal, but also for everything else that comes in the door. And uh, so why not just pop a needle in, um, put in some steroid, whatever you think, and move on. And you've got your ultrasound machine turned on and placed on the patient at the same time as you might be not even finished the history and just starting to get into the examination back to bones here, but it's so easy, it's so useful just to be able to be talking with your patient, putting the gel on their wrist, gently putting the probe on. You can't examine these people, they're too sore. You're going to want to get some imaging. Why not just get your image done? This, your neck of fifth, there it is there. You can see the angulation, you can measure it, and you know what to do. These are very easy to measure actually easier on a scan than they are on an x-ray. You know often your heart, you're trying to work out what the angulation is on your neck of, neck of fifth metacarpal. Well, there it is. What can be easier than that? Here's another one. You can see it's a little bit dis displaced like that, but you can clearly see what the angle is. You probably see a finger fracture every day or every second day, maybe several a day. Well, you know, sometimes the fractures aren't that easy to see. You know, there it is there. You pop the scan on. There you go. You're looking down through the pulp of the finger, you know, sort of the volar surface. Here's the uh, flexor tendon, the great big strong flexor tendon there. And there's, well, there's the fracture. Here's another view there. So you might also look at the toes as well. Toes and fingers, you know, most of the time, uh, if they're not displaced uh, or angulated severely, you're just going to use fairly conservative treatment. Well, it's pretty easy, isn't it? You can see a fracture on an x-ray, but look how easy it is to see on a scan. And you can see the position is pretty good. And you try and get several different angles. You also go transverse on these. But even longitudinal, pick one picture like that, you can say, right, I think for a toe, it's going to be safe just to put you in a darko. Let's just get you home rather than waiting an hour and a half to get the x-ray done. This is one of my uh, really preferred things to do is, is you look at you put the scan on before you x-ray someone and you can see there's a dislocation here, right? You can see that the one bone is there and the other bone is there and those need to be together. And you pop it back in like that, put it in a splint and then take an x-ray quick eh? same thing with a fracture uh, look there's the fracture there um, and you can see the bone going up there fracture there's the rest of the bone there put it back together it's not perfect but you can measure that on a scan that's about one millimeter because it's very magnified not bad you could improve it if you like and isn't it great to be able to just check with the scan uh, it's not quite there, I'm just going to adjust it a little bit more. And we do that a lot. We save ourselves sending people back and forwards to x-ray to check 
is the position okay? So the position check with your manipulations of your collies fractures, your finger fractures, whatever fractures you're slow, slightly adjusting, why not put the scan on, check the position is great, and then send for your x-ray and save that hassle of having to come back, take off the splint, take off the cast, and do it again. You can see these kind of volar fractures. This is a big one here, but you can see tiny ones as well on a scan. I told you we'd be speeding up. So look, here's your, here's your shaft of fifth metacarpal. Here's the lateral, the true lateral. Here's the first attempt, and um, it's still a bit angulated. I was called at this point, and there, after we'd done the scan thing, um, that's the final result. So what's the scan thing? This is the scan on the first look. We take the cast, first cast off. That's what it looks like on the scan. Um, we just straighten it up, uh, give it a bit of a push. You can use local or not. And that's the position that we have. We know it's in a great position. Put a cast on, uh, you know, mold it best we can. And it gives you a great option. Somebody is always going to interrupt your musculoskeletal clinic with asking you, is this person in retention? How much is in the bladder? What's the post void volume? And you can just quickly do that. It's kind of fun. Uh, it's nice to be able to help out your colleagues. Yep, you can see these just as easily in the base of the fifth. It doesn't have to be neck of fifth anywhere along there. Look at that. And a vole of you here. See the great big sort of flexor tendon in the vole of you. You can see it as well. Here's a scan of a second metatarsal in the mid shaft. This was virtually, no, not quite, but nearly impossible to see on the x ray. But I found a lot of these, and including stress fractures and really subtle. Uh, fractures that I've been able to spot in feet and hands. Yeah, and also it's not just long bones. Here's the cuboid. Remember that bone? Um, you get pretty good at anatomy when you start scanning because you're really interested not only in the bones but the ligaments that join them. But you can easily just throw your scan on the bone. This was not visible on the x-ray. The patient was really sore, really bruised going backwards and forwards to the GP. And sure enough, there's a little uh, crack there. So that's nice to be able to show them and um, explain to them it's gonna take a bit of time. So this is one of the my favorite interruptions and it happens often, doesn't it? That a woman in a uh, first trimester, she's bleeding. She wants to know, is how's my baby? Um, and there's the, Yes, there's an embryo. Yes, there's a fetal heart. And you can say that to her straight away. You don't have to wait for a day or two to get a scan. People say, you know, does it really change the out? Doesn't really change the outcome. But actually, if you ask the patient, it makes a massive difference. Same thing for rib fractures. You know, is there a rib fracture? Isn't there? Actually, people really appreciate and benefit, I think, from knowing. I don't think it's acceptable not to have an ultrasound in urgent care. And I'm sure you all agree with this. Um, here we go, another interruption. Is the IUD in the right place? Yes, it is. You can get as fancy as you like. You start off simple, do lots and lots of scans, see lots of normals, scan everyone. Here's somebody with a sore heel. You know what that is, but it could be a fat pad problem, could be a plantar fasciitis. So you look at the normal side, measure it, look at the abnormal side. Well, you just need to look to see it's swollen and angry. So you've got a plantar fasciitis. Here you go, that's the diagnosis and job done. I love these. People really appreciate getting their ribs ultrasounded. You know, ultra, uh, rib fracture is very hard to see on X-ray. Uh, waste of time, don't X-ray these people scan them you can see you can see a fracture there there's another patient you can see a fracture there well, actually same patient two fractures and you get the patient you give them the probe and you say put the probe right where it hurts and there you go you're right on it here you go three more patients rib fracture rib fracture and you've measured the displacement why not and 
rib fracture there, you can see really small ones. And people really appreciate knowing, oh, okay, that's going to take this a bit longer to get better than if it was uh, just a bruising. Notice up on here, the rib carries on, and there's the cartilage there. So the cartilage, um, the costochondral junction. Remember, anatomy. It's good to refresh. And I won't step on the toes too much of people uh, doing non-musculoskeletal ultrasound presentations. But of course, when you're doing your rib uh, fracture examination, you're looking at the lung as well. The lung is way more accurately checked by an ultrasound than an X-ray and by a stethoscope, of course. We should be ultrasounding first. Ultrasound is an integral part of your examination, and you should be doing that before the stethoscope. So my goal, when I'm still away from this, but it's to look at non-bony injuries and be able to say to people more than, oh, it's just a sprain or it's just a bruise or it's not broken, it's okay, because sometimes you can have a devastated, devastating non-bony injury, like a high ankle sprain. So it's nice to be able to look at the anterior inferior talo sorry, tibiofibular ligament, you know, between the tibia and fibula, the ankle joint. Very easy to see and intact in this case. So what about knee effusions? Effusions of all kinds are easy to see in the elbow, in the ankle, in the knee, in the finger joints. It doesn't really matter. Here's the effusion here. And you'll often find these when you can't detect them clinically and you can hardly spot them on an x-ray. These, these are fun knee infusions and the way that you can easily test them, just put a bit of probe pressure on there. Look at that. You don't want to put too much pressure on, a, on the probe, especially if you're looking for effusions or looking for veins, if you want to cannulate a vein or looking to um, do any kind of procedure. But why, you know, see how easy it is to see that effusion. You can measure it and you can easily stick a needle into it. Oftentimes you think you've fully drained a knee if you're doing it blind, but actually you put the scan on and there's still a lot of fluid left. So your patient says, oh, it's not broken, but it's so sore. Haven't I bruised my bone? And we like to say to people, yeah, well, you probably bruised your bone, but why not show them? Why not show them that there's a bone bruise there? So this is the finger pulp, that's the, the, the gel here, you're just very lightly touching or not even touching the skin at all. There's the skin layer, there's the subcutaneous tissue, there's the bone, and there's the foreign body that didn't show up on the x-ray and that's been sore for a long time. And it's not far, you can measure exactly how far you need to dig, you can mark it out very carefully and get that thing out. So I don't x-ray mallet fingers anymore because they're so easy to see on a scan and you either see a bony fragment or you don't. Here's a bony fragment. There's the tendon that's joining onto the bony fragment and it's separated off the base of the distal phalanx at the dorsal aspect. And just as easily, if there's no bony fragment, you can see the tendon sort of retracted with the swollen empty area. So no more x-rays for mallet fingers. I thought Liz Franks are such tricky things, but now that I know how to look at a Liz Frank ligament and measure it, I can tell someone with nearly 100% confidence and much more accuracy than an x-ray that they don't have a devastating life affecting bony injury of their or ligamentous injury of their foot. Now, uh, very common, UCL thumb sprains, UCL injuries. There's a normal, beautiful ligament with the linear fibers. We can measure the thickness. It's usually between two and three millimeters thick between the metacarpal head and the proximal phalanx of thumb. And here's the other side. Straight away, you can see it's disrupted. This is a third degree tear. And I've picked up a lot of these this year. Um, where it's too, they're too sore to test clinically. It's very difficult to be sure. There's a lot of inter-testing, inter-clinician variability. 
just put the scan on. You don't even need to test them, although you can do dynamic testing, and I often would look under the scan and stress the joint at the same time. But many people have been saved from having four to six weeks in a thumb spiker, uh, not really doing well, finally ending up with uh, problems and, a, um, and surgery and um, delayed getting it fixed. And uh, incidentally, Achilles tendons the same. Uh, twice this year, I found a complete rupture of an Achilles where they had a normal Thompson's test and no divot. So every single UCL, every thumb sprain needs a scan. Every single Achilles uh, injury needs a scan. They're simple, uh, the Achilles is anyway. I wouldn't say the same about the UCLs. But, you know, let's practice these things and let's really give people the kind of service that they deserve. That was a bit strong, wasn't it? <laughs> Here's an Achilles. This is not ruptured, but this is the, near the heel. The Achilles is, uh, should be about the same kind of width all the way along and then get taper thinner and thinner as it goes up the leg. But look, this big bulbous thing here. So it's not a rupture, but a big sort of tendon denosis easy to see so here's a finger and you can see this is at the dip joint on the volar surface there's a this is a swollen red finger uh, pricked by a thorn of, or something and low dose antibiotics quite sore you can see a tiny collection there not very big we doubled the dose of flu clocks we added probenicid got them back a couple of days later bigger uh, not getting better, more sore, uh, concern about the joint, although we can see on the scan, reassure them the joint's not involved. That's the joint down there. So IND under ring block, decent amount of pus, uh, patient got better, all good. This is just uh, coming to the end. Look, every time, uh, every slide is just another fracture, isn't it? This, so this, the... The clavicle fracture, you can see it uh, on the x-ray, but you can see it on the scan. What are we doing x-raying these people? Yeah, so I told you it was uh, going to speed up towards the end. This is how we come down mountains in the South Island. This isn't me, it's my brother, but uh, still, thanks very much for having me and uh, really enjoyed giving this, uh, giving this talk.